Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial on HEC HMS. And in this lesson, I'm going to talk about Canopy and the Canopy settings for subbasins. All right, what I have on the screen here is a model. I've already uh, created a watershed and delineated that watershed. Here's the, the full watershed here. I'm going to just focus in on the outlet down here. And I only need one subbasin to discuss the, the Canopy information in this lesson. Canopy is one of the main components that can be added to a subbasin, and it represents the presence of plants or landscape. Plants intercept precipitation and are involved in evapotranspiration, both of which reduce runoff and should be taken into account with hydrologic models such as HMS. Start by clicking on the subbasin you want to add your canopy to, or you can do that over here in the Watershed Explorer as well. Down below the Watershed Explorer is the Components Editor, and we have a field here for Canopy Method. So this Canopy Method is what we're going to be talking about in this lesson. And our options are None, that's uh, my default, as well as Dynamic Canopy, Gridded Simple Canopy, and Simple Canopy. In the lesson today, I'm going to actually describe them in reverse order. I think it makes a little bit more sense. First, I'll talk about Simple Canopy, Gridded Simple Canopy, and Dynamic Canopy in that order. So let's go ahead and select Simple Canopy. And then what it says is it's giving me a, a little message here. Are you sure you want to change the canopy type? Data will be lost in the canopy subbasin if you do. I'm going to say yes. And then um, what I've got here is my main subbasin tab and then my canopy tab that was just created. Now that default of a none canopy can be changed. If I go up to tools, program settings, and then select this default, put this here, uh, we have a sub basin canopy and for me it's set to none so i could change that to simple canopy or to gridded simple canopy or keep it at none for my default so i'm just going to keep it at none but basically whenever a sub basin is created in your project then that particular default sub basin canopy will be assigned to it also worth mentioning, you know, that error message that I got or a warning message that I got when I selected a different canopy type, I can actually take that off as well. If I select the general tab and then this second checkbox down here says display warning before changing component method, I'm going to uncheck that and then click OK. Now, if I go back to subbasin and I change the canopy method to none, it's not going to put up that message as I did before. So simple canopy and let's go. All right, so let's select that canopy tab here. And now we have some fields to, to fill out. Also worth mentioning is if the transform method is uses kinematic wave, then we have a canopy one tab and a canopy two tab. So that's a little bit of a edge case. I'm not gonna go into details there, but um, just so you know that that'll be coming up when we talk about the transform methods. Let me just put that back. Back to canopy. What we have in the canopy here is the initial storage method. Uh, it could be either by depth or percentage, and that is basically the initial storage base uh, of the max storage. So if our maximum storage for the canopy is, say, 0 0.2 inches, then in our initial storage on a percentage basis, maybe 50%. If we use depth, then 50% uh, of 0.2 would be 0 0.1 inches. So there's just two different options on how to set that initial storage. Using the simple canopy method, all precipitation is intercepted until the canopy storage capacity is filled. Once the storage is filled, all further precipitation falls on the surface or directly to the soil if no representation of the surface is included. All potential evapotranspiration will be used to empty the canopy storage until the water in storage has been eliminated. All right, so we've covered the initial storage, our max storage, and then the crop coefficient right here. It's uh, set to one, we can set it to zero. It really depends on the crop, the type of crop, and then where the crop is in its development. So it might be something like 0.2 or 0.4 in its early development. It may be higher, like one or maybe more in the, the middle stage. And then of course it would drop down to something lower during the harvest season. So just so you know, you need to set the crop storage as a single scalar value here using the simple canopy method. All right, the last two fields here, evapotranspiration and uptake method, these are going to show up on all three canopy methods. So I'll describe them here now. Evapotranspiration, our options are uh, only for dry periods or for wet and dry periods. The user's manual mentions that uh, this wet and dry periods option was added in a, a later version, and it's probably a little bit more accurate, especially for longer simulations. 
The uptake method, our options here are simple or tension reduction. Uptake method refers to the extraction of water from the soil. So this simple method uh, extracts water at the potential evapotranspiration rate. Tension reduction method will also extract water at the potential evapotranspiration rate in the gravity zone, but then it reduces that rate from the tension zone. Okay, so that's it for the simple canopy method. Next is the gridded simple canopy method. So let's go ahead and change our method to gridded simple canopy and then head over to the canopy tab. And we have some different fields, but similar. The first one's the same. So initial storage, this will be anywhere between zero and 100%. We'll just put 50. Next, we have to define the storage grid. So before we had a single value for the storage, and that was just in inches like 0 0.2. But now we have a grid. This method basically employs the simple canopy method, except it uses a grid cell basis. Each grid cell has a separate parameter value and separate precipitation. I need to select a storage grid and I will talk about the crop grid at the same time since it's a similar concept. But right now it's grayed out, it says none. And the reason is I don't have any grid data sets that are loaded up in my model here. So to do that, we'll go ahead and go uh, components and then grid data manager. Next, I have to identify the data type and I'm going to select a storage capacity grid and then click new. Next, I'm going to uh, type the name or I'll just paste the name in here. I'll call it storage capacity grid one and then create and then close that. And now up here in the watershed explorer, I'm going to collapse the basin models directory. And now I have this grid data directory. If I expand that, I have a directory for storage capacity grids. And if I expand that, I see my storage capacity grid one that I just created. All right, so down below here in the components editor, I would also need to provide the data for that grid in either a DSS file, ASCII file, or GeoTIFF file. If I go with the DSS file, then I'm expected to provide a DSS file name and path name. But if I, have, um, if I choose ASCII or GeoTIFF, then I have to select the file and the units. So I'm not going to do that uh, in this video, but if this is new to you, by all means, check out lesson five in this playlist. This is a, it's entitled grid data, and I go through some examples about how that works. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and add a grid for that crop, uh, crop grid. So let's go component and grid data manager. And then this one is crop coefficient grids, grid set right here. And then new, I'm just going to give it a name called crop coefficient grid one, create and then uh, we have a new crop coefficient grid set folder. And then here is the crop coefficient grid set. Here is the data that we need to fill out again to tell HMS what the crop coefficient grid is. Okay, we've got our grid set up here. So let's go back to our sub basin and then click on canopy. And here we go. We have, to, we have an option now to select for our storage grid. We'll select storage capacity grid one. And then for crop grid, we'll select the crop uh, coefficient grid one. We can also make that selection from this dialog box and then uh, click select, same thing. All right, so as with the simple grid canopy method, we have these evaporation, evapotranspiration method and uptake method. It's the exact same options here with the exact same discussion. discussion. So that is it for the gridded simple canopy. The last one is the dynamic canopy. So let's go ahead and change our canopy method for subbasin 45 to dynamic canopy and then select the canopy tab here. As before, we'll provide the percent initial storage, we'll say 50%, and then the max storage again um, in inches, I'll just make up a number. We'll just say that is 0 0.2 inches. For crop method, we can select either none, grid set, or M series gauge. So if I select grid set, this is sort of like the grid set we just provided and I can select that crop coefficient grid. This is what I use for the simple gridded canopy method. So that, that's an option. And then the other option is time series gauge. If I use time series gauge, this uses the crop coefficient that changes during the plant growing season. For this time series gauge crop method, I need to define the crop the time series. So this is similar to what we did previously with the gridded data manager but it's instead go ahead and select components and then time series data manager from data type select crop coefficient gauges okay it's right here and then new 
I'm going to just type in or paste in a name for this gauge, click create. Now in the watershed explorer, let's uh, check out, we have a new directory here for a time series data. So if I expand that, I have crop coefficient gauge data, and here is my crop coefficient gauge. The component editor requires information as well, such as the type of record such as DSS or multiple DSS files in the event that the crop coefficient changes not only over space but over time. So there's a lot of flexibility here using this dynamic canopy method. But go ahead and enter this data as well. I'm not going to talk about that in this lesson, but if you uh, need some in-depth examples here, check out uh, lesson three in this playlist. It's called time series data. All right, let's go back to our sub base and one last time click canopy and now we have a option for to select the crop coefficient gauge one and this is the time series data that we just entered all right so that's it again evapotranspiration and uptake method apply for this uh, dynamic canopy method as well so that was it for this lesson we talked about canopy in sub basins in heck hms there's three different types we have the simple canopy gridded simple canopy, dynamic canopy. Within this canopy tab, we talked about the different data associated with each of these different canopy types.